Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mariela Salinas, and I'm a marketing specialist here at Educate360. Welcome to today's webinar, the top 10 Microsoft Excel shortcuts presented by our fantastic instructor for today, Ed McRae. We are in Zoom for today's session, and we will be sharing a copy of this recording with you in an email after the webinar. We do encourage participation throughout the webinar, so please use the chat or the Q&A option for our short Q&A after the presentation. Educate360 is so excited to present this webinar today. So without further ado, I will hand it over to you, Ed. All right, good afternoon to everyone and hello and welcome to our webinar. Again, this is top 10 Microsoft Excel shortcuts. Now, when you hear the word shortcuts, your immediate thought is probably going to go to keyboard shortcuts. But what I want you to understand is that shortcuts is not just dealing with keyboard shortcuts, but anything that we can use, any functionality that we can use in Excel to perform our tasks more quickly in one step or two as opposed to multiple steps right so things like formatting or inserting rows and columns or uh, entering in values even these things can definitely help us out why should we use shortcuts well to quickly perform tasks that would otherwise require multiple steps it can help uh, to avoid using the mouse uh, which can be slower and less efficient than using the keyboard so during this session, we're going to take a look at several of these shortcuts. We're going to look at how to remove duplicates. We're going to talk about how to merge cells, how to create drop down lists, how to freeze a row, how to lock cells, how to customize your ribbon, how to do absolute referencing, how to customize the quick access toolbar, and a couple of common keyboard shortcuts that you are going to want to know, such as Control N, C, B, X, all other kinds of things, right? So let's jump into a workbook here. And the first thing that I want to deal with is the removal of duplicates, right? The removal of duplicates. Um, now, as a side note, this isn't necessarily a shortcut, but it is something that is going to help make our data a little bit more manageable. And that is taking our list or taking a list and turning it into a table, which we can do by clicking inside of our list. We can hit the keyboard shortcut of Control T to start the table process, or we will find it under Insert. You can see table here, right? Takes us into the same place. All right, and as long as I'm clicked inside of the list when I do this, it will put the marching ants around the whole list, and I can click OK, and there we go. This is now a table, right? Now this is making life easier because a table is gonna encompass and include several different uh, sets and pieces of functionality that we would find other places in Excel, such as sorting and filtering, right? We see these drop down arrows up here to help us to do that. Um, we will see in a bit with a formula structure, right? We can get our formulas in place a lot more quickly. Um, we have alternate colors of rows in our table. We will even see when it comes down to um, freezing a row, notice that when I scroll down in my table, it replaces the ABC headings in my columns with the names of the fields, right? So just the use of a table is a very, very good starting shortcut, I think, okay? And the reason why I thought of that is because one of the functionalities that are made available directly inside of a table is the removal of duplicates and so we see that right here if i'm in table design i see remove duplicates as an option here for me now if i were to go into the uh, data tab in the ribbon remove duplicates is hanging out over there as well all right so we don't have to be in a table to remove duplicates but it does include that as a function of the table so if i were to click on remove duplicates what it's going to do is list for me each of my different fields that are there and I can check off the fields that I want it to look for duplicates in so I can look for or have it remove duplicates from just one solitary field 
or I could have it look for duplicates in a combination of fields, right? So like if I want to make sure that there are no duplicate records as a whole in my table, I could just leave everything checked like it is right now and just click OK. And it's going to tell me right now no duplicates found because I don't have any duplicates, right? Uh, let's go back to remove duplicates. Let's say that I should not have any duplicate combinations of region sales rep and product line for whatever reason, right? So I'm going to unselect everything. I'm going to deselect everything. And let's choose the combination of columns, region, sales rep, and product line, right? And I'm going to click OK. And there we go. It gets rid of those duplicates for me, right? Now, does it tell me what was duplicating? No, it does not. It doesn't care. It's just going to wipe out any duplicate information based on that combination of fields, right? So you would want to be mindful of that. Make sure that you analyze your data first before you remove the duplicates so that you can make sure that you are getting rid of the information that you actually desire to remove, right? I'm going to control Z to undo, right? So another important shortcut, control Z, okay? So this is great, right? Very easy to use. Now, a way that I use this quite often is, let's say that I have a list that I want to, or a, a column, and I want to uh, ultimately create a drop down list um, using each unique element from that column. Let's say I'm dealing with the, uh, I don't know, let's do the product lines, right? And let's say I wanted to have a, a list of product lines. Um, what I would do is I would highlight this whole column, right? Now, a quick way, since we're learning shortcuts here, quick way that I'm doing that is I'm using the keyboard shortcut in this case of control shift down, right? I'm holding the control key, the shift key, tapping my down arrow. It's gonna move all the way down and highlight that entire column of information, right? Uh, I will copy that, and then I'm actually going to create a new sheet over here, and uh, let's just call this uh, list sources, All right. and I'm going to paste that right in there, like so, and then what I'll do is just go ahead and remove the duplicates, right, so I'm going to go to data, remove duplicates, okay, Okay, I said, follow my directions, obey my commands. All right, there we go. Okay, and it gets rid of all the duplicates, and there we go. I just have each unique value like so, and I'm just going to get rid of this formatting just because I want to, <clears throat> and there we go. So I very quickly was able to deal with uh, and get rid of any duplicate values even in that one column. All right, and we'll use this a little bit later uh, to deal with a listing. Okay. All right, so that is a very great thing. Again, we get that as a part of our tables. We also uh, have that when we go into the data tab in the ribbon. We see remove duplicates there as well. Okay. All right, let's talk about how to merge cells merging and unmerging of cells. I'm going to add a title here. Let's add a couple of rows at the top of this table. Apologies, I'm using a trackpad here, so it's a little bit clunky. There we go. And I'm going to put a heading here. Let's just call this uh, 2024 <clears throat> quarterly totals. Okay. And let's say I want to have this appearing as a title at the top of my table. I'm going to need to merge my cells together just so that it looks a little bit nicer. Let's say I want it, for example, to be centered over this whole area, right? I'm going to highlight that whole area over which I want this information to be centered. When I go to the home tab here, I'm going to see a merge area. And if I click the drop down there, I see several different merge options, merge and center, which would, of course, merge the cells together and then center the text from the first cell inside of whatever was merged. We have merge across, which basically would allow me to merge multiple rows, but keep the rows separate, right? Like if I highlighted 
this whole table and said merge across, it would still keep each row separate, like as one big cell. We have merge cells, which is just going to merge everything into one big cell. It's not going to center anything. And then, of course, we have unmerged cells, which, as you know, is going to unmerge the cells, right? So I'm going to say merge and center. Boom. There we go. Merges it together all as one big cell. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger and make it look a little not that large. Uh, make it look a little bit. That's good. A little bit more like a title. Throw a little underline there. Beautiful. All right. This is fantastic. All right, let's get rid of this other, uh, matter of fact, let's merge all that together too. Let, let's see if it lets us do that. Merge and center, there we go. I and mean, let's center this in the middle of all that. And this looks wonderful. All right, so merging and centering, great way for us to be able to combine multiple cells into one. It's always gonna keep the value of the first cell or the leftmost cell as the main value. And whatever that first cell is, is gonna then become the cell reference, right? So if I look here, this whole cell is now cell A1, okay? All right, I want to create a drop-down list, right? I want to create a drop-down list, and we can create drop-down lists using data validation, right? Now, drop-down lists are great for just basic data entry. So if I have uh, choices that I need people to uh, be able to choose from, like specific choices, a drop-down list is going to be good for that. But then also, oftentimes, drop-down lists will be connected to, like, another cell. We won't, won't see that in this example. But, you know, we can have a drop-down list connected to a formula uh, that's like a lookup value or an if statement or something like that, where as we change the value, uh, it is going to then automatically look up information somewhere else or, you know, do other things, right? Um, all right, so, for example, we – I copied over – these uh, list items here, these product lines, and I've got laptops here twice, so let's get rid of that. I don't know how that happened. There we go. And what I'm going to do to make this process a little bit easier is I'm going to just make this a named range. All right, I'm just going to go to formulas here, define name, and I'm just going to call this product lines. Okay. And I'm going to use that in my data validation to create my drop down list. So I want to have a drop down list in this product line column so that when people are entering in records, they would choose from that drop down. Right. So I'm going to use the same shortcut I taught you guys a few moments ago to highlight that whole column. I'm going to go to data and I'm going to choose data validation. Let's try that again. I don't know why that doesn't want to load. There we go. All right. So from here, the only uh, tab I really need to be concerned with is the settings tab in this case. So we're going to ignore the other two. And I'm simply going to come here and say allow list. So what I'm going to allow in the cell is going to be a list. I need to put the source of the list. The source of the list has to be within the workbook. It can be on another sheet, obviously, because that's what we're doing right now. Uh, and usually it is, right? But it just has to be within the workbook. Oftentimes we could have it somewhere and then hide the sheet that it's on, which I'll probably do here in a moment. Uh, so we used our name, we're using our name range here of product line. So I'm just going to paste that right in there, right? I'm gonna click OK. And now we've got drop down, a drop down list in this column. This is fantastic. Right, so I can choose a specific product. All right now, I, I quickly navigated to the bottom of this by just doing control and then my down arrow. All right. And if I come down here, let's add in a new record. West. If I come here, my data validation automatically carries down. This is another benefit of using a table. Those things carry down. Use my drop down, and now I can choose the appropriate um, product line in this case. Okay. So the use of drop down lists, very nice shortcut for data entry. Also, we could have it pointed at things. For example, in real life, I probably would have um, in this source, I would have the name of the line manager here. And then over here in this column, instead of this long unnecessary if statement that's there, I would just have a V lookup that's looking over there and bringing back the line manager based on the product line 
that I have chosen. Okay. All right, this is good. Let's keep moving here. Let's talk about freezing a row. Freezing a row. Now we already see that if I have a table that happens automatically just by clicking inside of the table and then scrolling down, it is going to replace my ABC column headers with the name of the fields. However, let's say I don't want to do that. Let's say I want to kind of manually freeze a uh, top portion or left portion of my spreadsheet. I can use the command of freeze panes to do this. And to do this shortcut, I can just simply select a whole row and it is then going to freeze everything above that row. All right, so I'm going to select row number four. And it, when I freeze panes, it's going to freeze everything above that. So my headers and then my title up top. I'm going to find freeze panes under the view tab. So I'm going to go to the view tab in the ribbon. Right here, I'm going to go to freeze panes. And I'm going to choose freeze panes. All right, and there we go. It has frozen those panes. So if I scroll down, notice that that top portion of my spreadsheet is staying put and everything else is scrolling. So this way I can still interact with my drop down here. I can still get to my sorts and my filters or whatever else I want. And I can still see my overall title of my worksheet at the top. Okay. So we highlight an entire row by clicking on the row numbers. It is then going to freeze everything that is above that row when we go to view and choose freeze panes. If I want to undo that, I can go back to freeze panes and say unfreeze panes. Right, and then that gets rid of or unfreezes the panes. And now if I start scrolling down, right now it's not frozen anymore. It's just doing the, you know, the thing where it's moving the header row into my sheet header area okay. all right so freeze panes is a great tool to use uh, let's talk about absolute referencing shall we Af absolute referencing is used whenever we have a constant value that we want to incorporate for example i'm going to create a column or a uh, entry over here let's call this tax rate and right now, let's put a value in here of 7%. And I want to use that in a formula to calculate the tax for each of these sales. So I'm going to add a new column here. Let's call this sales tax. I'm going to set up my formula. All right. I'm going to say equals. I'm going to click on my total. And because I'm in a table, of course, it is going to put the name of the field. We're basically creating a calculated field here. This is going to allow the formula to automatically populate down the totality of that column, right, in the table. All right, we're going to put our asterisk for times, right? Boom. And I want to multiply that by this cell or this value here in cell C2. Now, if I leave this the way it is, Let's see how this works in the table if it does it automatically. I don't think it will, but let's see. Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. Uh, if I leave it the way it is, it's not going to work because relative referencing has it changing this from T2 to T3. I'm going to use the um, trace precedent so you can see. Right, so if I keep moving down, it's moving me further and further away from my tax rate, which is only in cell T2. If you're wondering how I'm getting these arrows, I'm clicking on a cell with the formula in it, and I'm clicking the trace precedence button that's here in the formulas tab in the ribbon, right? That traces the cells that are included in the formula. Okay. Look at all these cool nuggets you guys are getting here. All right, so what I need to do is turn this into an absolute reference, and an absolute reference has a dollar sign in front of the column letter and the row number in the cell reference. The keyboard shortcut I can use for that is the F4 key on my keyboard. So I'm going to click in my formula bar. I'm going to put my cursor right on that cell reference there. And on my keyboard, I'm going to do, and I've got to find uh, the function key here uh, for my keyboard. So I'm going to do function, I'm going to do uh, F4, or function F4. And it puts the dollar signs in front of the T and the 2. Now what this will do, hey, that rhymed. 
is it's going to switch it from a relative reference, which is where we started, to an absolute reference, to what's called a mixed reference, right? So if I keep hitting F4, watch what it's doing. It's going to start moving that dollar sign around, right? Now it's just locking the row number. Now it's just locking the column letter. Now it's a relative reference. Now it's an absolute, right? So we can use that shortcut to quickly toggle between our different references. Okay? Uh, in this case, we'll go with an absolute reference, although a mixed reference, if I lock the column, would work just the same. But we'll keep it as absolute. Then hit enter, and everything works now, right? So if I start using my trace precedents, start copying this down, right? It's only referencing back to that same cell or that same value in cell T2, right? It's moving the K value or the, uh, the, the L value down, which oh, I'm sorry, the K value, which is fine. That's what I want. But it is only referencing that one value in cell T2, all right? So this is fantastic. And again, the keyboard shortcut I can use for that is the F4 key on my keyboard. All right. all right, let's take a look at two uh, last things here real quick, and that is the customizing of the ribbon and of the quick access toolbar. The quick access toolbar is up here at the very top of our environment. We're able to add other commands to this uh, if we want to do so. And I can do that by clicking on the arrow here next to the quick access toolbar. First of all, there are a bunch of tools that are already there that I could easily add in, right? Like new, you know, open, right? Just common commands here, quick print, spelling, right? Any of these things, I could add them in. If I go to the bottom of this, I can choose more commands. And this is going to take me into this environment where I can begin to edit the quick access toolbar. What can we do? We can start moving or changing the order of these commands that are here. Let's move this around to kind of more of a traditional like file tab arrangement. That's pretty cool. I can remove stuff or redo. I don't care about that. Uh, this report formatting macro, I'm not using that anymore. I don't care about that. Let's say spelling, I don't care about that. All right, so I can remove what I want. And then I can start adding things in. So over here on the left, I have all these categories of commands I can look at. Let's look at all commands. And I could just search for whatever it is I want. All right, every Excel command is there inside of that list. All right, I can just search for whatever command I want to search for. I could add it in. Let's say, for example, this uh, color, the, this theme colors, I want to add that in choose that and hit add it adds it in for me click OK and there we go now that's what my quick access toolbar is looking like okay now lastly here I could do the same for the ribbon right I could do the same thing for the ribbon if I right click on the ribbon anywhere I want I can choose customize the ribbon And this is going to give me the ability to do a lot of different things, right? I can turn tabs on and off. I could actually create a new tab if I wanted to, right? Um, whatever it is I want to do, I'm able to do here. I am going to expand the review tab. And uh, you'll see here that I actually already have a custom group over there. Let's actually go look at that for well, the review. I've got a custom group created here called Legacy Sharing, which has some of the old school sharing stuff built in right there. Okay. So that's cool. Let's go back in here. Let me show you how we how we could do that. How we can add some stuff in. I'm going to go to the Insert tab here, unless I wanted to add a new group at the bottom here. I could say New Group. I'm going to rename that. Classic items. And I can start adding stuff in. So let's see if we can't find something here. I'm going to go to commands not in the ribbon. Let's see if we can't find the good old pivot table wizard, which is floating around in here somewhere. There we go. Pivot table wizard. Let's add that in there. All right, so now that's a part. And I could search for whatever other commands and things that I wanted to. 
I can click OK. And if I go to insert now, that custom tab is there. And there is pivot table and pivot chart wizard or custom grouping rather is there and I could add whatever commands into that whatever other commands into that I want to add in. All right, so these are different tools that are going to help us uh, by making life easier removing of duplicates merging locking drop down lists freezing rows customizing the ribbon absolute referencing different common shortcuts like control N, C, X, V, uh, control using our arrow keys to move around the continuous range and what have you. All right, All right my friends, it's been a pleasure sharing with you. At this time, uh, Mariella, I will turn it back over to you and uh, we can open up the floor for questions if there are any. Absolutely, thank you so much, Ed. Before we get into any questions, I wanted to remind our audience that uh, New Horizons has an exclusive benefit for attending this webinar. We have a free digital achievement badge for a Microsoft PL 900 course. I went ahead and dropped the link in the chat. You can go ahead and click that whenever you get a chance. And if you're unable to redeem the badge right now, or if you're watching a recording of this webinar, you can still gain access to the free badge with the link you'll receive in an email after the webinar. So be on the lookout for that, guys. Alrighty, let's get into some questions. We have a question here from Omer, and it was in the bit from the beginning of this webinar. What if we have data related to the duplicates that we remove? Um, if there's data related to those duplicates, that data is gone too. Now, if you're talking about related as in like linked uh, in another cell or something like that, then the formula would be broken. Uh, but if you're talking about like data within that same table that's just in a different column right it removes the entire record so whatever row is, is you know is involved it's removing all the data that's on that row great to know awesome we had another question here when removing duplicates based on field selection which one does it keep is it the first in occurrence yes it's going to keep the first uh, occurrence of the data awesome we had another question here. Can you use an, can you, I, I, I'm gonna try and assume the question actually, I'm so sorry. Can you use a worksheet as the home to several other worksheets? I'm assuming that's what they're. Can you use a worksheet as the home to several other worksheets? Yes. Is that the can question? Can you use the other worksheet as the home to several pick lists? Maybe that's a better question. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, you can have multiple because the the basis of your drop down list is ranges, not entire worksheets. So you can have as many different lists uh, sourced from that same worksheet that you want. That's fine. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for that insight. Um, we had a couple questions here about the copy of the recording. You're definitely going to get one in an email after the webinar. So do not worry. Be on the lookout for that, though. And we had, it looks like one more question. Can you combine columns into one, such as a first name and last name column? Um, can we create one column for those? Absolutely, you can. You can do that through the usage of a uh, formula. You can also do that using flash fill as well. Flash fill. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great info. And I believe I'm looking through the chat. Any last minute questions? Thank you all so much for your, your questions, by the way. I think we got to them all. And with a minute to spare, everyone, this is amazing. I love this. Um, thank you again so much, Ed. This is a lot of great info. And again, if anyone needs any info on this topic, please do not be afraid to visit us at newhorizons.com. If you missed out on any part of this session, we will be sharing a recording with all of you in an email after the webinar. So thank you so much, Ed. My pleasure. Awesome. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. We will see you soon. Bye.